Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. We're gonna do another week in the life of. So this week we have uh, some tentative plans as always. We'll see what gets done. Um, but number one, we're gonna start off today with a fun adventure straight away on a Monday. Um, we uh, bought the, uh, agreed to buy uh, a large uh, portion of a collection uh, locally of an early Ford collector. Um, we've been working back and forth with the family for quite a while. And basically we got a semi trailer and a bunch of stuff in a building full uh, of parts that we're gonna go. So Mike and I are gonna go and just eyeball it all. We might just grab some stuff off the top of our pickup trucks. Um, we're also gonna work on the sedan delivery a little bit this week. Steve's gonna try and get the wiring wrapped up in this thing, get all the lights working. Uh, I'm gonna work on putting a set of uh, like 35.6 uh, commercial headlights on this paint them, do all that stuff. So we should be able to get a bunch of work done and then hopefully by the end of the week, I'm gonna try and get the 33 three window of the Arden back on the lift and I'm gonna start repairing the last of the major rust on it. So we got a lot planned and uh, might even try and throw some wiring on the lights in the new building in too. So we'll see what happens with our week as always. You never know with weather and everything else that jumps in the way if we get everything done, but we're gonna have fun whatever we do. So let's get started. What do we get ourselves into? So we are starting on a, a local estate that we uh, are helping to clear out. Um, and this is one of the things that they did not want to have to uh, go through and do the labor of, of uh, clearing out. And our specialty is greasy, heavy, old Ford junk, apparently. So Mike hasn't seen this. I've been here before to look at this all and ahead of time. But we have this semi-trailer. There's a building that's next door that has some more organized stuff. But this is the big thing that we have to slowly start going through. So good way to start our week Monday is pull a little bit of stuff out. We'll show you when we get back to the shop some of the stuff we dug out already. But this is going to be our big task in this, probably in the spring. Is this Depends on how mild the winter is. Yeah. It's going to be Mike's job, not mine. I'm going to sit and drink coffee. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> pocket so I don't lose the keys. So when all the buildings got full, much like us old car collectors, you get a trailer and then you just start heaving. Oh wow. You start heaving things. Oh boy. You caught that? That's a lot more full than I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I like have a, I, There's a door just up wedged have, up in there. I have dread but also excitement because I love this, but also the work involved is gonna be not fun. So this was kinda like um, the overflow, so to speak. And you just kinda the stuff just kinda got set and placed in here or the loader, you just you know, put the trans in, but you could just see there's we'll walk you on the other side then, but there's just no rhyme or reason. This is where having a knowledge of how these cars go together and what fits what. Um, comes in handy and you can't know everything but we know a fair amount so a lot of it we're kind of able to you know backing plates for this and bell housing for that and, but there's just it goes there's this is not the whole trailer this full but it's this it's like here. a 50 foot trailer as well yeah but there's just you know pieces torched out of parts cars and who knows what else but it's pretty much 99 percent early ford there's a little bit of chevy mixed in but it's 99 percent early ford so um, a lot, some of the stuff is labeled, luckily, but um, a lot of it we know. But this is heavy, greasy, old stuff, but this is the stuff we like saving because they don't reproduce any of this and you can't really fabricate a transmission, you know. It's a little tough. A little tough. I mean, you could, but not worthwhile. So we're going to just walk through this a little bit, get a game plan, pull a couple odds and ends today. We don't have a ton of time or space uh, to move all of this in one shot. Luckily, it's local enough. We can make trips back and forth over the next who knows how long and uh, start making a dent in this. So let's take a look around. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my God. And that's where we were all the way back there. Yeah, there's there's a lot in here. Oh my goodness. Everything and anything you can think of. Yep. 
cows, trunklets, doors. I don't know if I've ever climbed. So you can climb like up in here. Go right ahead. Oh, is this a... I don't know what that is. Uh, so at first I thought it was a cart. 8A. There's another one sitting there. And another another one. one, another one right by your hand in front of that oil pan. Great. I had, I did go in here one time, once or twice. Forty-four pedals. Use this other transmission. Oh, What's that dash right in front of you? Is that, is that Merc? Uh, Thirty-nine Merc, I believe. Nice. There's all of like two people in the world do. Looking for that. Wide five drums, which are always good. Hey, Chevy part. Oil pans. Oh, there are lights in here. I forgot how to. Yeah. Uh, that. Oh, you plug in there. Maybe you brought an extension cord. Yeah. Just all heavy mechanical stuff. Can't wait. This is going to be fun. More oil pans. Hey, look. Yeah, I saw it. The shelf of flathead oil pan. We shelf of pans. We got you. All right, I'm going to run back to the shop and unload. Let me know when the next truck's ready. All right. <laughs> Good luck. All right, so Matt went deep in the trailer. Pulled some stuff out. Just for fun. Not what somebody would think would be coming out of here. No, definitely not. But... It says shit I know, I know. Had a lapse in judgment. It's okay. The truck loads at least mostly for me. One Chevy part won't hurt. Then an axle. Yep. That's a complete... Nice. Way. Yep, it's burning. Way, way down on, on the wishbone. I saw the wishbone. It looked like it was 32 to 4. So, Matt, Matt went in there. Hello, sir. I'm deep down in. Yeah, you're standing on the floor. I'm actually now. standing on the floor finally. There's one little spot that didn't get filled. But you like see little areas like there's a bunch of steering boxes back right here. <sighs> oh yeah. My goodness. We got our work cut out for us. Oh crap. Yeah. Yeah, just to you can see things but you can't get to them or touch them or it's like an old time junkyard <coughs> Junkyard used to go to where the shit's like, oh, there's more steering boxes back here. It's like going to those old junkyards with buses. Yeah, I love it. This is, this is like my child, my young adulthood doing this, but we'll address most of this another time. Oh, what was that? So we're back at the shop. I have a mess to clean up. We got a generous box donation from a friend. Thank you, Chuck. So I got to go through and deal with that because it's in our way. So you guys saw we were digging in the um, in the trailer a little bit. Uh, the property is very private. They don't want, um, they're just not looking for, the, you know, put their property on display. So they're letting us film, but uh, we're trying to not show everything. So the big there's a big building next to where that trailer is that is they've been clearing out for years there's still a lot there um but uh we have to go through that and it is not as unorganized as the trailer but there is pallet racking with stuff that's kind of unorganized there's some pallets of boxes of stuff that is kind of unorganized more transmissions more oil pans so um, we just kind of today went through and picked a handful of things that were interesting that maybe we don't have or like in this doors case It was just in the way so we just grabbed it and put it in the truck um, and, uh, and We'll just show you guys a little bit of what we got It wasn't worth doing a whole video But we thought we put it in our week in the life of because this is a lot of stuff We would do that we would never film and then the stuff would just go for sale. So yep. um, So Matt's trucks basically besides oh yeah. the 
bit on top. It's filled with Kara Wilson engine tools. Uh, Specialty tools. There's yeah. Manzel, there's Kara Wilson, there's factory Ford stuff. But there is a bunch of... Basically, the whole bed floor is filled with tools. Filled with all old early Ford tools, which is uh, phenomenal for anybody that um, has been doing this a while. Some of those tools make the job way easier. There's some stuff. To be completely honest, I probably bought the whole entire load for just the tools because there was some specialty tools that you I didn't literally have. literally could have used one yesterday. Yes, like a st uh, early Ford, pre-40, early Ford steering wheel pour, a Kara Wilson pour or Manzel, there's one of them in here that actually has a rubber piece and a, and a C-shaped part that goes behind the steering wheel and pulls it off because previous to 40, mm. there wasn't the holes for a traditional steering wheel pour. So they made that. They're kind of hard to find when they do pop up on eBay, a lot of people were bidding on them. So they're kind of hard to buy for cheap, so to speak. So my um, very expensive and long <laughs> roundabout way to do this is to buy a whole building and tractor trailer load of parts and I get to keep like five things and uh, and that somehow in my brain works, I guess. So Car guy math. Yeah. So we pulled out this really sweet, I think it's C10 tailgate it is freaking nice and yeah. probably when it was thrown in there it was not anything special but nowadays with c10s being so popular a uh, a nice tailgate like this i figured was a good one and again it was kind of like on top ish that we were able to rip rip grip drag pull and i was able to get it out of there um and then so that's what's going on in here there's a little bit of parts of my truck and nothing. we also filled my truck we, we emptied another building that was on the property that someone else is renting now. So we went through and cleaned out all the early Ford stuff. Yeah, so there was, uh, again, this property had building, a bunch of buildings, and there was stuff at one point packed to the gills everywhere. Again, with them cleaning out and selling some cars and stuff, they're now gonna start renting some space or have friends that wanna use some of the space. So we went through the one garage just to get anything off the shelves. And at first we were like, Oh, there's not that much stuff. There's a couple doodads in here. And then you st every shelf and corner had little bits and pieces and parts. And suddenly... It's a up, whole bed full. You get like a small bed full of stuff. Some of the stuff that I was excited about like uh, is some black. I don't know if this is one Yep, or diamond not. black. Diamond black lacquer. Whole cans of it. So we have plenty of black lacquer to blend in on cars or spray stuff. Every car is black lacquer from now on. Yeah, from now on. Uh, but there's some interesting stuff that we saw in here. There's little pieces. There was somewhere when we dig it out, we'll show you, but one of my favorite things, there's a box of these little leather keychain oh, yeah. holders that you flip out. People have probably seen, but it's a, it's a Lincoln, Zephyr, Mercury, and like, I think it's like 37 era with the shape of the V8 for the Ford. And there's a bunch of them, they're like embossed. So they're really cool because I'll use and them. And they were local, local to us too. Yes, it was a local dealership and there was a little you know, box of them, maybe five or ten. Um, but those are cool just for us because we can put them on our own keychains for our own cars, which is neat. So we're going to dig all this stuff out. And we'll, guide, we'll give you a abbreviated rundown of some of the stuff we find. It's exciting. Uh, I'm really happy to go through all the tools and pick a few things out we could start using like right away. Cylinder plugs. We were looking at those. We're trying to figure out if that's to check the bore. Well, it wouldn't make sense because the bore is going to be different if you grease. Well, to check if a taper and a bore, you put that down it and it would, if it gets tight or loose, that's you true. Could, you could tell if it's a taper. They're for the three different ends. Yeah. Yep. So 16, 3 16 and V8 16. Yeah, that's probably what they are. But like, I've never even fucking, never seen that shit. No. No, it's not. That's the problem. Some of these tools with multiple. Mm, is that one of them things? That's the thing. About? That's it. Nice. So we're keeping that motherfucker. Hell That's yeah. Shit. Hell yeah. Shove it in the hose. Pew 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 pew. pew. That was the first thing you saw when you walked over. That was house. so stupid. I was like, yeah. oh, look at this. Uh, what what are we one one? Keeper stuff. That is for an engine stand. Okay. I think that's an adapter for the stand to hold. Oh, 2834. Might be a trans. Yeah, I'm not sure. I feel like I saw a piece like that, and it's to hold a transmission on the Carol Wilson okay. stand. Yeah. They, they made adapters 
to rebuild your trans rate on that, which would be very handy. You could use one of those stands in here for transmission work. What is it? A brush sander. Oh. For the Model A brush sander. Yeah, for like the, the generator. Brushes. I guess so. Or yeah. starter, yeah. Yeah. Run that sandpaper around in it. Oh, and right. the brush is push, You push that yep. in between and let the, the, the brush brushes go down it. and yep. you sand it. <laughs> like Holy crap, man. They have a tool for freaking everything. Yeah. That's like another one of the stand also. Is that's it, the same as that same other, as other one. one. Unless it says back. The one said front. Yeah, that one says the other one says front. This one is standing. It is a it is a little different. Yeah, so they might be put those aside. Put aside. Okay. Yep. Yeah, they, that's their competitor. Oh, All their stuff's cool. aluminum. Oh, oh yeah. cast iron. I found the bin of uh, key holders Matt was talking about. That's super hard to see. Let's see if I can bring out in, this, in the light, take a look. There we go. Mercury V8, Lincoln Zephyr, W.E. Kleckner, Sladington. Huh. Neat. Super cool. I think there's 10 or so in the one bin we got. A whole bunch of them. Oh, this is cool. Nice. Oh, yeah, look at that. Real cloth wiring. We're not going to use it. It's going to go on the shelf. Yeah. Okay. Nice. These are all. Guess what we need more of? Yeah. More gaskets. Yep. These are keepers too? Yep. All right. It's Tuesday morning. Matt and Steve are working on the set and delivery. Steve's still wiring. Matt's working on getting some headlights painted um, to get the next video wrapped up. I have a lot of packages to do. I just looked. Here's like 55 or 60 from the weekend. Uh, I didn't do any shipments yesterday because of all the stuff we bought and unloaded. By the time I got back and got all that done, it just wasn't enough time. I got some shipping quotes, that's about it. So I got all these packages to do. I have two freight shipments I gotta get done early this week. So I gotta take those over and drop those off. A lot of work to do, so let's get started. So this engine we are shipping out, uh, trying to give Mike a hand one day a week, or at least half a day in the uh, parts side of things. So this is an engine that, <laughs> kind of funny, this is the engine that we got um, with the Plymouth that we got. Uh, this is the main engine reason we went to get that Plymouth station wagon is because we got a flathead with it. So this flathead I was going to put, this was like rebuilt in the 80s, was apparently the 
the deal was on a run stand when we got it, but we got rid of the run stand. It was a big, heavy thing, and uh, we didn't need it. And we ran it. It was all good, good, great compression, really clean inside. Um, everything seemed good. And I had it put away, actually was going to put it away for myself uh, or for one of our own cars. And we got the sedan delivery, and uh, Andy, our viewer that turned us on to the stand delivery, he was purchasing the 46 to 8, I don't remember what year it is, 46 to 8 two-door sedan. It was very clean that was there, but it was missing an engine. He then, you know, very quickly after we got back said, hey, I need an engine if you got one. So because Andy helped us out, this wasn't for sale originally. We gave him a good deal on it, and uh, he has an engine that's basically going to be able to, you know, for the life of that car, will we'll be plenty good, and it's the correct engine for his car as well. So uh, we're putting this on the pallet, sending it out to him. He's going to get, he's very excited to get this thing in the car. And uh, yeah, so no problem shipping engines and heavy stuff. We got the process down. Mike's very good at it now. So. I, I have the process down. Mike's got the process down. Hey, I help you sometimes. Ready? Yeah. Four. Might shift the engine forward a little bit so we get directly over the. Yeah. I mean, there we go. I'll pick up if you want to move the board. There we go. Yeah. Screw Much that better. down into yep. it. And then what I usually do is water pump the side, water pump the side, and then one across the top and. They ain't going nowhere. That's right. Well, I shouldn't say that. I've seen the truck. I've seen Steve, the former truck driver, drive. <laughs> and some of the uh, some of the engines and stuff. When we sell these, we generally sell cores or not cores. We generally sell good used engines. So something we've run on the run stand. And what we usually do, like when I sell a car, if anybody saw when we sold the car and Freiburger bought it. I write notes on stuff. I like to be as uh, forthcoming as possible. So this engine with Andy, uh, that we're selling Andy, or we sold Andy, I wrote, we wrote down all the, um, the cylinders when we first cranked it and what the compression was. They were really good, 125, 120, 123. For, for flathead, very, very good. And then I usually write notes. The engine came with the Plymouth, was supposedly rebuilt in the 80s. Ran for 17 minutes to 200 degrees at idle with no fan, oil pressure. And then we also, Andy asked for a carburetor and Steve rebuilt a carb for him. So we're throwing in a, um, a rebuilt carburetor. And I'm actually, we're throwing in a second one for him with a kit so he can have an extra. And then he also asked for some sort of distributor. So Mike has somewhere in here. Oh, we gathered out of our parts just a good distributor. This actually looks like one that was an old rebuild. I think you can just file the points and probably use it, but um, Andy asked for that stuff as well, so he could fiddle with that. But we've already run it with all our test parts, so hopefully he can file the points, bolt the carb on, um, and then put it in the car and it'll be good to go. So try and help out as much as we can. This is stuff that if somebody's interested, we have a lot of this on the shelf. So Mike's gonna get the bander out, get this all banded up and then wrapped, and send it down the road to Virginia. It's Friday and I'm out a little before the guys, so I have to make a quick little road trip today, which I'll talk about in a second. Uh, Steve got 
Uh, pretty much got the sedan delivery ready to put upstairs until we get uh, the Columbia rear back from being rebuilt, bulletproofed and rebuilt. Um, and the last couple things he did was get the choke hooked up, and get the dash kind of put together. Anybody missed that video, we did. Um, we swapped in the Crestliner steering wheel and uh, we did a bunch of neat stuff. Steve was just buttoning the last of the wiring up. Uh, we just have some temporary gauges hanging till we get our final gauges and then we're going to be putting them in the center there. Steve has the headlight switch and the choke all hooked up. Um, you can see with the with the high rise he had to make that come out the top there. It worked out pretty good so yeah that's moving along. I got the 33 um, first rocker welded in on this. You can see the new metal under the door there. I have to do the other side probably this weekend or later today. I'm going to get into that. This side's definitely worse, but get those rocker strips replaced. But what I'm doing now is we're going to go visit a local uh, early Ford nerd guy and uh, pick up a V860 rear. I'm going to take Big Red. Uh, he has a tractor and stuff to load the stuff. So we're going to get a Big Red starter up and uh, get moving along. Now the crest line, you said that's you've had that for a long time, right? Yeah. I bought that in the 70s. And it has super low miles, right? Uh, I had a rear spray done on it. Sure. Did the paint job. When I saw you in this last, you said it had, what, 60,000? Was it some real low mileage? When I bought it, uh, this one had 21,000 oh. on it. It just turned 33. Oh, 33,000 yeah. <laughs> yeah. My gosh. And this, this car rides good. Yeah. Oh, I love it. This color is fantastic, too. Glacier I really... blue. Glacier blue. Yeah. What's the story on the wagon? Uh, my neighbor told me that his brother-in-law, he was telling me for years, had a 53 special wagon. Okay. And I was always bugging him about it. You know? <laughs> and he said, uh, he said, I think he's ready to sell it. So uh, I said, well, I'd like to take a look at it. So it was up in New York, Bristol, New York. Okay. So I went to look at it and uh, Wow. He was telling me the story of this wagon. This wagon was used at a kid's camp to haul the trash out. <laughs> really? And when the camp closed, it sat in the garage. It never went out in the winter time. Oh my gosh. But I mean, it needed a paint job when I saw it. I had two paint jobs and somebody threw some acid on the hood. Oh geez. But I mean, the rest of the car was Top notch. Could you redo the interior? I had the front seat done, just the front. But the rest of it's all original. Really, the up, wood. Up, the, up in the door, man. The wood grain. I had the dash and the door wheels painted, but the uh, door panels and everything. And uh, take a look at the headliner. The door panels are original. Yeah. Wow. They're original. They're original. I can't believe they're in that good of shape. Yeah. All right, so we are working on getting a new service to the shop. Um, we have 
meter and stuff hang on the out, hung on the outside. Um, have a service cable run in here. Uh, when I did this panel a couple years ago, uh, I could not get a main disconnect in stock with the brand breakers that we had. Um, for whatever reason, everyone was out of stock everywhere, so I just threw in a non-main breaker panel because um, we were using the breaker in the house. Now, we have to put a main breaker in because we don't have one. So I installed this. I am going to work on getting the service cable. I should say Steve installed this. I take zero credit for that. Steve mounted that up. I'm going to work on getting cable ran overhead temporarily. Uh, once we get the um, other cable down from up there, I'll attach it permanently because um, there's not enough room for both up there at the moment. So I'm going to get it run back behind the license plates. I'm going to move this cable over, run it down the side here, and then into this side of this box, out of the bottom of this box, probably come right out of the bottom of here, turn right into the side of there, up and around, bada boom, bada bing. So got a lot of random electrical work to do. So I'm going to get to work. So this is either gonna go or go poof. We'll see. Poof, I'm running. Switch on. The sketchy ass fucking. Yeah, I need to address that, all these the, plugins. The, the, an extension cord oh. to an extension cord. 12 lights. Wow. Damn. That is pretty nice. awesome. Wow. Let's go look at the, the great work that Steve and I did. So the plan is double step. Oh, yeah. There's going to be a light switch here to just. Oh, this is amazing. Moon has to come check it. Look, we can see up here, buddy. Yeah, he's like, then it can go look around. Wow, dude, look at that. And look how dark it is over the office where the two <laughs> lights aren't on yeah. yet. <laughs> so that looks really good. It looks amazing. So now it's like bright, but not giving me a headache. Yeah. And up here, you can see on all the shelves. Wow, yeah. I didn't know we had all this crap. <laughs> <laughs> now that we can see. Yeah. So man, I should stop Steve and I took six hours and just knocked out all the lights upstairs. I got to do three over there, but good progress for a Friday afternoon. Heck yeah. I'll say it That's looks, awesome. Looks great. One more step closer. <clears throat> You're not getting that orange extension cord back for a while because sure. I'm going to plug the lights in and be like, look, I can find everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now you see it downstairs. Yeah. So last, last night I was folding merch because we got a giant sale or a giant restock of that so I was doing it by candlelight in the dark <laughs> this is great maybe next week I'll get the downstairs done yeah that'd be great yeah that'd be uh, makes really, that would really make it easier for you yes I don't have to leave the doors open and all the leaves from the outside comes inside yeah yeah plus it'll stay a little warmer with the door closed mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's question what do you think moon you can see up here now buddy yeah, I stuff I can see. Yeah, you can go go explore now Just careful careful come on step let's go down all right so you're on a little adventure today yeah so while mike and steve were were doing wiring uh stuff today i took a little side adventure um we've been so busy with the building in the past like year or summer that there's been a lot of like we have a lot of stuff where like somebody will say hey i got you know, I took a car apart. Do you want like a pickup truck load of stuff or whatever? And I say yes, if it's a good deal, but then 
sometimes a year goes by or six months. So this summer, uh, there's a local, a local guy that I went and visited um, that is in the early Fords and has an incredible collection of cars. Um, he, he converted a uh, V860. Uh, he had a 40 Ford with a V860 and he converted it to an 85 horse or 100 horse engine with a Columbia in it. And he had the leftover stuff, another random transmission and some odds and ends. And we just wanted to go and visit. So I went over and visited and uh, dug around a little bit. So the two things I got for myself that I found that wasn't fully expected, but um, I had asked about ahead of time. I got this uh, nice Crestliner, Victoria, whatever you wanna say, a Ford accessory wheel. Uh, actually in pretty good shape. Um, just the horn ring, the top bar is broken off, which happens quite often, but the uh, very nice original one, just some small cracks in it, but very good for like a driver quality car or survivor car, which you know we do a lot of. So really psyched to, to find that. And then one of his 39s or 40s, he, he had this distributor on it. It's Harman Collins dual coil distributor. So I got this as well, it was a good deal. And I'm gonna go and look at mine and as always upgrade. So if this one's better than the one I have in my case for myself, we'll swap them out and then and, and, uh, make the decision. Sometimes I go up there and this one, both end up in the case mm -hmm. and they don't come back, so. What else did you find today digging? Oh, digging, <clears throat> got a, some interesting 32 parts. Um, that's nothing, but we were going through a bunch of books. I photographed like a crap ton of stuff. We had a lot of like not fun stuff to photograph. That's the part of this that sometimes is not exciting is I had to go through from the estate where we got the 34 sedan delivery. There was a bunch of 63 T-Bird parts. So I spent like the afternoon after I got back photographing 63 T-Bird parts, which is not exciting for me. And I don't really know what a lot of it is, but we photographed it because we want to save the stuff and get it out there for sale. So I got that pallet all cleared out and uh, it's still a mess in here. But yeah, we got stuff from Monday that we brought and we haven't even hardly looked at or touched, but- um, We'll get under control. We'll One get under control. Days. We're going to keep moving, but that's- uh, now that there's lights upstairs, Matt could photograph at night if he decides to work late. Yes, that's the that's the big thing with get getting the light before now with the fall fall and the time change, it's like dark. So a lot of times in the summer I was working and then it, after dinner I would come out and photograph some stuff to help Mike get some things lift, listed. So now I can do a little bit of that at night if I am bored. Bored, mm -hmm. I can do that. So that's what we got going there. I'll show you guys the uh, the stuff we got in the back of the truck. So I used the big red truck. Didn't get the film loading because it was kind of not that exciting. Just a few parts. It was like a few parts or my buddy George came and, um, and helped. So we got the rear there. The interesting thing about that rear for anybody that's not familiar, V860 cars got a super low gear. So I think they were 444 was the gear ratio. So for example, a lot of early Fords got 378s. Um, 411s was the low gear and 378s was the common one and 354 was is pretty rare, but that was like the highway gear. So 444 is very low. Now the thing that's interesting about them um, is that people, guys doing hot rods or old race cars with quick changes, they would run a 444 ring and pinion because when you run it one to one, it's gonna be a very low gear. So if you're doing short track racing um, or eighth mile drags and things like that, guys would run that type of uh, gear. Obviously for street driving, that's not very good because at 35 miles an hour and third, you're going to be tacking the engine out. So I wouldn't expect it for that, but it is a, it was a low, all of John's cars are like low mileage, super clean cars. So the rear is very clean. And that's why I picked it up. Also got the V860 trans with it. It's a little bit different than an 85 horse for the case, but we believe the I'm gears are all the same. I'm sure someone will correct us. Yeah. I, I believe from what I understand, or what we think, um, the actual gears, the internals are the same as an 85 horse. I don't know, we have to open it up and check it out or look at one of the green Bible or one of those things, but we're gonna open it up and check it out. Super clean trans, so fingers crossed it is a good one. And then we also got this overdrive trans here that, uh, that he threw into the deal. So we're gonna open that up, take a look and see what uh, is inside of it and uh, what gear ratio and all that stuff it has and uh, maybe offer that for sale. I don't know yet, we'll have to open it up and see, but this is one of those deals where you go to pick up one thing while you're here, we end up with a bunch truck more. So, uh, so it wasn't, wasn't uh, totally necessary to drive the big red truck, but it was, it, fun. it was a good excuse to drive the big red truck. It's always fun to drive this truck. So that was a crazy, uh, it didn't seem like it was gonna be that busy of a week, but the week flew by, we were joking. I was thinking in my uh, out loud that uh, we did that parts 
uh, buy that we did and we visited that was this Monday this, in this video. I thought it was last week. So I was, like a couple hours ago, I'm like, yeah, man, th last week, that was crazy. We went there and Mike's like, that was this past Monday. Five days ago. Yeah, so that's how our weeks go. It's just a, a lot we pack in, but still getting a lot done until the snow flies. We'll be trying to stay as busy as possible. And we are on our way to finally getting uh, power and lights in the buildings and all that stuff. And we'll be, uh, we'll be cooking with gas then, so. That's all we got for this one. Thank you guys for following along. Appreciate it. Catch you later.